Alolan Dugtrio has got to be one of the weirdest Pokemon they've ever made. This is basically an ordinary Dugtrio but with a mean haircut and it gets the ground and steel typing. It's got decent offensive stats at base 100 attack and 110 speed, and it has access to the hilarious ability Tangling Hair, which drops the opponent's speed one stage if they make contact. However, it also has access to the ability Sand Force. This makes it so that ground, rock, and steel moves do 1.3 times in Sandstorm. Its stab coverage like Earthquake and Iron Head enjoy this boost, and also coverage like Stone Edge. Overall, this Pokemon's as weird as it gets, and today we're gonna try it out. Ladies and gentlemen, if anybody ordered a three pack of hot dogs with a haircut, I've got it for you right here. Alolan Dug Trio is just the goofiest thing that Pokemon has ever created, and that's what I'm into. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And today I have a super fun match against a very scary team here. Real quick before we get into the battle, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Look, it's 2024, and if you're using the internet without a VPN, you're absolutely blowing it. A VPN is a virtual private network that keeps you safe by masking what you do online, plus a bunch of other cool perks. When you connect a device to the internet with Surfshark, all your information is encrypted and totally safe. While online safety is an awesome perk, there's some other fun stuff that you can do with a VPN. Surfshark allows you to change your IP to anywhere in the world. This means that if you're sick of American Netflix options, you can switch your IP over to Japan, and then boom, you're accessing a ton of movies and shows that you wouldn't normally be able to access. Another huge perk is with price discrimination. This is probably my favorite use. When you're browsing for flights or hotels online, companies track your cookies and serve you higher prices based on your activity, but the Surfshark VPN bypasses this by not allowing them to track your data and can often give you much lower prices. They also have a feature called Surfshark Search where you're able to browse the internet literally without a trace, meaning it's one of the only ways to get truly organic search results. One of the best parts is that you can use unlimited devices and share with friends on one single subscription, and you can try out Surfshark using my code Hayden to get up to an additional three months for free. And let's go ahead and get back into the battle. All right, so my opponent is gonna straight up lead off with the threat. They go back Scalibur, and I have myself a hippo, and this thing is extremely scary. I'm obviously concerned about this thing potentially setting up, but in general, I know that I can take like one icicle crash here, and I decide to just go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock. It turns out, this thing cannot see a damn thing in the sandstorm, and it does in fact miss the first icicle crash, which is actually pretty damn clutch, because this allows me to get up my stealth rock, and at this point, barring you know, a setup here, I can still potentially take one more of them, as I am, uh, I'm definitely a wall. I'm making shit dry out here, and uh, I can take physical hits. So, they do land the next icicle crash here, we barely hang on with 41 HP, which does allow me to go for the earthquake. I figure just kind of opting for some damage here is kind of my best bet, as getting chip on this thing is extremely important back Excalibur, no matter what the hell it's doing, it's always just a massive threat here. So, the bad news is, I really don't have anything that wants to switch into this, and as much as I'd like to conserve my Sandstorm, I figure I'm just gonna stay here, go for a Whirlwind in case they want to set up, but it turns out they're actually just gonna go right for the Scale Shot, which is gonna in fact give them a little bit of setup in the form of a speed boost, and again, Baxcalibur is just a damn menace. So, I do have to let the Hippo go down, but I figure I still have a pretty solid option here, even with this thing at a plus one speed boost, I, I have a little bit of a trick up my sleeve. So, this thing is obviously getting some sand in his eyeballs here, a little bit of pocket sand, never hurt nobody, and now, I can freely go into Sand Slash. I figure, with my Sand Rush ability, my speed being doubled makes it so that I am in fact pretty damn speedy out here. So, I decide to go into Knuckles, and of course, I, I run the risk of getting hit with an icicle crash if I go for the setup here with the swords dance, but I really do want to get that uh, get this thing extra sharp. So I decide to go ahead and commit the Terra Steel. That's going to make it so that I resist the incoming icicle crash. I can then, you know, obviously take an attack and set up the swords dance, which then sets me up in a spot where we do still have a turn of the sandstorm to be able to outspeed this thing. So I put the axe on my head menacingly, and I'm going to go ahead and dance with swords. Nothing sharper than a Terra Steel with the Swords Dance. We got axes and swords, and we are out here feeling dangerous. Meanwhile, Baxcalibur is feeling blind because he does in fact miss another Ice Cold Crash, which doesn't really matter a whole lot in hindsight because I would have been able to take the hit anyway. Uh, but at this point, I can now use my Sand Rush Speed to outspeed this thing and knock it out with an Earthquake. So, we're in a pretty good spot here. However, Sandstorm turns are, are running out. I'm actually not running the uh, smooth Rock on the Hippo to prolong the Sand Terms. I wanted to kind of mess up. I've been messing with that thing's item, but uh, the Sandstorm is going to go away. And even though that does happen, I'm now slower than a lot. However, Sand Slash is still in a pretty good spot because 
I know that I should be able to take attacks from anything, and I can do a ton of damage in return. So they decide to go into Annihilate, and Annihilate does have the option to outspeed if this thing isn't running extra bulk, and I figure I could still potentially take a Drain Punch from this, but it turns out Sand Slash is actually still faster, and an Earthquake just straight up knocks out the Annihilate, and that means that that thing was uh, not running max speed, which is fantastic for us, because it's not every day you get to see an Annihilate go down to a Sand Slash. So the Earthquake there with the Swords Dance, if that thing was max HP, which I assume it was, Earthquake's doing like 109%. So we're able to grab the kill, and now this draws in the unfortunate threat of the damn Ursa Luna. Now, here's the thing, I am obviously still faster than this slow-ass bear. I can go for an Earthquake, but it just barely hangs on, it's able to take it, and then fire off an Earth Power in return, and Knuckles is definitely not living that. So. Down goes the Sand Slash, where our, our sweep was a little bit short-lived, but honestly, we were able to make a pretty big hole in the team and taking care of the ape, and then basically putting this thing into range where anything knocks it out. With the kind of bulk that this thing has, it oftentimes just sticks around way longer than you'd like it to, and getting it into red is going to make it a whole lot easier, considering I've got a ragtag group of weirdos left on the team. So, at least I can, however, bring in Dirty Doug and the boys. I bring in the greatest hair in the game, and I can easily outspeed this thing, and nothing really wants to take an Earthquake, so they don't have a lot of switch out options. So that is easily going to take out the Blood Moon, and it turns out sometimes you don't even need the Sand Support to do a lot of damage with the Doug Trio, as I feel like I have a great matchup with this thing, and I do want to try to conserve it as a win condition, if possible. So. They decide to go into the Skeletor Dirge. Now, with that Stealth Rock chip, it's looking like it's a potential roll for Earthquake to kill, and this thing is way too important for me, so I'm gonna actually end up switching out here, mostly because I do just have a perfectly Assault Vested Lantern here who is just glistening in the sun waiting to take attacks from this. It does go, you know, for that Torch Song, which isn't gonna do very much, but, you know, it does give them that special attack boost, and at this point, my main goal is just to chip this to range where the Doug Trio can come in and kind of revenge kill, or just pick it off later, as they do actually reveal they have the Earth Power, and this is why it's very clutch to have uh, the, you know, max HP Assault Vest Lantern, because I'm able to live the super effective hit, even at plus one special attack. And this fish is way thicker than people think, and it really helps us out there. So, I get some solid damage with the Scald barely leaving this thing alive. It does finish me with the Earth Power, but I kind of did a, 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 at least what I needed to do. You know, I would like to have had Lantern, also for the Golden Go, but I do feel confident that uh, the, the Hot Dug can come in pretty clutch here. I can bring this thing in, uh, I do outspeed as this thing doesn't have any form of priority, and uh, we're just out here picking stuff off with the Hot Dogs, like it's a damn 4th of July barbecue out here. I can go for one more Earthquake, obviously they don't have much to switch into that, and that takes care of the Skeletor. It's kind of one of the best counters, or at least answers, uh, to, to this thing, depending on how the build was. It pretty, if it was full, it could have likely taken an Earthquake, but... Uh, that takes care of it, and now this draws in the Iron Hands. Now, one thing that is important is that they haven't actually committed their Terra at this point, and I'm afraid of stuff turning into, like, a Flying type. This thing comes in, it is Booster Energy, and I'm gonna go ahead and play it safe here. I do have the Chestnut, who does a pretty good job at walling this thing, but also, you know, I have the Rocky Helmet, so if they want to touch me, it's gonna take some chip, and I really would just need to kind of see what this thing wants to do. So, it turns out they're gonna end up going for the Drain Punch there, does do a lot of damage, but I don't care how iron your hands are, it's still gonna take some, some nice chip from that Rocky Helmet. And at this point, I kind of feel like they probably don't want to stay in here, their final Pokemon uh, being the, the Golden Go. They might switch, I decide to go for the knockoff to try to catch the switch, it does not end up happening, and of course this thing no longer has the item because of the booster energy, and I'm able to do like nothing. Now, they also have the coverage with the Ice Punch, and that kind of hurts a little bit, as I'm not going to be able to take another one. And at this point, I just go for a body press just to get as much chip as possible. So they finished me with that last drain punch, but I've got this thing easy into range to where uh, the Alolan Dug Trio has been looking nice the entire time. It's all about conserving the wind condition out here, baby. And sometimes the wind condition is just some goofy little fellow. So <laughs> that thing goes down and I can just bring back in uh, basically either at this point. I have the Scarf Gengar to be able to outspeed literally anything, but also... Doug is just out here looking luscious, so I bring this thing back in, and we're just out here picking stuff off all day long, baby. The Choice Band Earthquake, nothing wants to survive that, even if you're like at full. That's going to take care uh, of, the, of the hands. And luckily, we didn't see any crazy Flying Terror there. So, their final Pokemon is going to be the Golden Go. And luckily, obviously we have the type matchup here, and this thing shouldn't be able to take me out, kind of depending on what set this is. So, I'm obviously just going to stay in, go for my safest play, which is the Earthquake, but it turns out... 
they are going to commit the Terra here. I'm like, oh god, please no balloons. Please do not have any balloons. It turns out it's going to be the Ghost Terra. So what that does is it removes its steel typing. So at least now an Earthquake is a no longer super effective hit. I, I do obviously still outspeed because we fast as hell out here. And this thing gets a critical hit, but it lives on literally one HP. Now, this allows it to fire off and make it rain, which I live with damn near one HP of my own. And... That was actually insane. That has to be like specs damage from this thing. Um, as now I can fire off one more earthquake and that was the most clutch Doug Trio live ever because this thing is a massive threat. So down goes uh, the golden go there and that's gonna be the end of the match. It's not often you see the Alolan Doug Trio in general, let alone clutch it out like that in a crazy win. So I thought that was just a, just a ridiculous match and just overall pretty fun. And if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. YouTube likes it. And uh, it really does help out the channel. So thank you guys again. I will catch you next time. Peace out.